Okay, I'm going to go through how to do um, the chlorine, uh, both free and combined chlorine tests, and a pH test using a comparator rather than a photometer. So what I've got here is a comparator, two color wheels that you'll need, one for pH, one for chlorine. You can tell which is which by you know, the, the color, the fennel red, uh, or the pH wheel will be, uh, the colors will be more red, whereas the, the DPD um, for the free and combined chlorine will be more pink. But it's got, um, on the back, you'll see chlorine and uh, fennel red. Not sure if you can see, not sure if you can and then you'll be able to tell as well by the colors, you know, the, um, the color wheel that I've got here goes from uh, seven, uh, no, sorry, 6.8 through to 8.4 range. So that's obviously, you know, just by those numbers that that's gonna be for pH. Um, the chlorine one goes um, 0 0.5 through to six. So you can tell which one is which. Um, so the comparative color wheels, DPD and fennel red tablets, uh, test tubes, um, crusher, sample of water. And what we'll do first is get a, a blank in a similar way to photometers. There's got to be something to compare the sample against once you've got the reagents in there. Um, so grab 10 ml of sample water from your pool, top it up to 10 ml on the, on the test tube, following all the same types of um, good practice that you follow with the photometer in that there's a meniscus, the meniscus should be on the, the 10 ml, let's get that in, 10 ml marker as you're looking at it at eye level. Make sure everything is clean as well. Rinse out your test tubes with the sample, with the water that you're gonna be sampling. Um, and yeah, make sure everything's clean, make sure everything's dry. And what you do is, is that test tube goes in the, the sort of left-hand side of the photometer. There's a couple of sort of things, uh, holders for you to put the, um, the tubes into. So have that on the left hand side. Meanwhile, uh, I'll just put a cap on that as well. In the other test tube, rinse out uh, a sample of water. Rinse out a test tube with a sample of water. Uh, I'll rinse it out again. Just leave a little bit in the bottom so that you can do the two stage test. So what I mean by that is if you have a, can you see it going pink? That's a DPD-1 tablet that I've just put in there. DPD-1, that's for free chlorine. You can see it going pink. And the idea is, is to keep your eye on the color as you top it up, see it stay in pink. If it was to go clear at this point, that's bleaching out. And I talk about that in another video in more depth. So I won't, I won't go on about that too much in this video, but you always start out with a few drops of water, top it up to 10. If it didn't go pink at all, even with just a few drops of water, you've got no chlorine or you've got a dud tablet. If you top it up to 10 and you, and it went pink, but you see it going clear, then you've possibly got an over chlorinated uh, sample of water. Crush the tablet. You might want to use a tabletop for it. These, these days, these uh, tubes are plastic. They used to be glass and used to end up uh, breaking them. But uh, these days they're plastic. Make sure the, um, the tablet, fully uh, 
fully disintegrates so that you've got no tablet fragments left over. Might need to be quite determined because of the way that these uh, test tubes are designed. There's a little dimple in the bottom that makes it difficult to crush the tablet. But make sure the tablet is completely crushed and is fully reacted. Then you'll see it's gone a certain pink colour. Put a cap on that. Now you put that in the other side. So you've got the uh, blank sample on the left, the, the sort of live sample, if you like, on the um, on the right. Get the appropriate colour wheel, which the test that we're doing is on chlorine. So you need the chlorine colour wheel and um, put it in. And what you need is a source of white light, which is um, the the most obvious source of white light is the sun. So I've, I'm going to just open this or you can use a, a fluorescent tube. They also produce white light, but I've got quite a good source of sunlight here. I'm going to have to get this at a certain angle. So you hold it up and hopefully you might be able to see that as you rotate, can you see the two the two uh, apertures there and as you rotate the wheel see that's that that one there is the weakest on the color wheel I think that's 0 0.5 that's one 1.5 yeah two and I think maybe two is the match what you're basically trying to do is get that match uh, maybe 2.5 definitely not a three and it goes through the uh, through the range that's the idea and what you'll see here is the number corresponding to what the the chlorine level is um, sorry if I, my face got a bit close there so that's the idea um, so the best match that I can see here, 2.5, I'm pretty sure about that. So that would be the free chlorine, 2.5. And as you can see with the comparator, there's more of a, there's more of a judgment involved because you are using your own eyesight to make the comparison between the, um, the sample color of the sample and the color in the color wheel, uh, which is potentially problematic for people that have issues with color blindness. Now, apparently, 10% of men uh, statistically um, have got issues with color blindness, so that could be a factor that determines whether you go with a comparator or whether you go with a A photometer because with photometers you're not relying on anyone's perception of color here they're basically the machine the device does it what you definitely should not be doing though if you're operating a commercial swimming pool is using either a water tester which is just one block of clear plastic with all the colors printed on there or a, um, a test uh, a test strip of any sort. They're too inaccurate and they're only really geared towards domestic pools rather than commercial pools. So it's either a comparator or it's a photometer if it's a commercial pool, which is what we're predominantly at Stockwell Safety more geared towards uh, providing courses about. So that's free chlorine. In terms of doing the um, total chlorine so that you can work out the combined chlorine. What you use for this one is a DPD3 tablet. You put that in, in, in the same sample that you've got the DPD1 already in. Don't touch the um, tablet with your fingers and that goes for all these tests. Don't touch the tablet with your fingers because you'll taint 
the uh, you'll affect the result so two minutes for the dpd3 tablet while we're doing while we're waiting for that two minute reaction time i'll put that over there we can get on with the fennel red tab tablet test to tell us what the uh, the ph is so what i'll do is rinse out another test tube and with the with the ph test you're not worried about the bleaching out thing that is only really to do with chlorine so 10 ml of water fennel red tablet into the sample crush Crush it up with the crushing rod. Make sure that the uh, tablet fully disintegrates. Um, you can potentially sort of invert the, the test tube to try and encourage the uh, tablet to uh, disintegrate, but don't go shaking the, the, the test tube uh, vigorously because you'll just create loads of air bubbles that will get in the way of you being able to tell what the color match is. So again, that goes into the um, the available slot. Change the color wheel, and do the same again with the holding it up to a source of white light and observing the the color match. I'll try and get it at an angle so that you can hopefully see. Can you see that? And it's exactly the same process. Just keep rotating until you get a color match personally i think it's that one which is uh 7.4 which would be within range if it was a a, a pool sample meanwhile it's been two minutes now on the uh total chlorine so we can have, a, have another look at the shouldn't shouldn't have put that away should i open that up and bring you over here so let's can you see now same process it's the same color wheel as we did with the uh the other the the dpd one and the match that i get there is uh, 2.5 so that's 0 0.5 1 1.5 2 2.5 to my eyes that's that's the match same as the uh, free chlorine was which is uh, it is what i expected to be honest with you because uh, believe it or not i have i haven't actually got a real swimming pool um at my uh, at my premises here so i i prepare a, uh, a water sample with uh, uh, with bleach so there would be no combined chlorine um, in a water sample that has been prepared that way because uh, there won't be any ammonia in there or or your urine or sweat or anything like that because it's just ordinary tap water uh, but in a in a swimming pool obviously um, there is going to be bathers using it so they're going to be introducing urine sweat etc which are precursors to uh, ammonia which then go on to combine with chlorine uh, and produce combined chlorine I'm not going to go too in depth on that right here and now because there's another section of the course that goes into uh, into detail on what combined chlorine is but what you would usually expect to find is that your total chlorine test with the dpd3 would be higher than the um test that you did with the dpd1 for the free chlorine it, it wouldn't it might be the same if it's the first test of the day and you've got second secondary disinfection like uh, for example ultraviolet you wouldn't expect there to be any combined chlorine in that circumstance so yeah you'll probably find that the dpd3 comes in at the same color as the dpd1 um, but as the day gets busier or if you if you if you um if you haven't got um, secondary disinfection um, 
then you might find or probably usually will find that the DPD3 tablet is going to be higher than the DPD1 tablet. What would be incorrect is if the DPD3 tablet came in lower uh, than the DPD1. That wouldn't make sense because essentially um, when you're doing a DPD3 test you're getting a total. So you can't have the total being less than a component of that total. So something's gone awry if you ever find that your free chlorine result with your DPD1 tablet is coming in uh, at more than the total. It, a common reason for that is that the um, the tablet hadn't yet fully disintegrated and um, especially in a photometer the photometer will be hitting the tablet fragments um, that are still there and uh, it might be reading darker than what it actually is. Possibly the same with a comparator although um, maybe your eyes wouldn't wouldn't be that sensitive to it not sure uh, but anyway there you go there's how you to do the um, the comparator test, um, the um, the free chlorine, the total chlorine, um, and the fennel red tests on a comparator. What I will say is, is do make sure that um, when you're using any particular test equipment, um, that you're using everything from the same uh, manufacturer. So, if it's a uh, if it's a paling test comparator then use palin test test tablets and furthermore use use palin test test tablets that are for a comparator because you can get test tablets that are geared towards photometers and you can get test tablets that are geared towards comparators and they're different so make sure that you're you're not mixing and ma uh, you're not mixing together different test tablets um, in the same uh, at the same sort of testing station which we've seen quite commonly there's a mish mishmash of lovey bond and, 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 and palin test and DPD tablets for comparators and DPD tablets for photometers and uh, it's not good it, it doesn't um, you do it's, it is going to affect the results that you get so make sure that everything is from the same manufacturer and you're using the appropriate test tablets for the particular device you're using for your testing um, for your testing purposes.